DIY will be the mounting of our masks. If you're one of my longtime subscribers, then you've probably already seen my DIY on how to make this mask. And in that DIY, I did say that I'll be showing you how to mount this mask. So that's what we're going to do today, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. All right, so one way that I plan on doing it is to use this clay roller. So what I want to do is just cut this right in the center and make this two equal halves. And then, um, I found this at Hobby Lobby. And I actually found like four of them. And um, what I did was just pop the pineapple off because I want the base. So I'm just going to set this aside because we won't be using it. So these two pieces will become one later in the video. So now I have this round base that I picked up at Michael's. And I have this round stick or dowel or however you pronounce it. Um, we're going to be using that. I have this miter box picked up at Michael's also. And I also have this little razor saw that I picked up at Michael's. And this is how the package looks. We're going to be using this rust control white spray enamel because I don't have any primer. We're going to be using some silver spray paint. We're going to need some E6000. I have a crayon just so I can mark the stick where I need to cut it. I'm going to be using some silver glitter and I'm going to be using some of my glitter spray. Some Mod Podge and a foam brush and my glue stick. So hopefully I have everything here ready to go. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is start on my wood piece first. So I'm just going to set everything aside. Oh, and I have a tape measure, but you can use a ruler too. I decided that I want my stick to be 4 inches long. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is take my small miter box, and like I said, I want to make it about four inches long. Okay. If you decide to use this particular razor saw set from Michaels, um, it comes in two parts. You just need to assemble it. Just get to sewing. So what I'm going to do now is just hold this down in place and put it right here. Get to sewing. And make sure you watch your fingers. Just like that. And it looks a little uneven, so I'm just going to try and straighten it out. Okay, so that's pretty good. Alright, I'm going to remove the sticker. Okay, guys, I'm back. I had to take a phone call. So I went ahead and removed the sticker from this piece. And what I want to do now is glue these two pieces together. And I knew I was forgetting something at the beginning of the video, and that is the wood glue. So I have wood glue because I want to glue these two pieces together. And this is Elmer's Carpenter's Wood Glue Max. And um, let's see, just pop that top up like that to use it. Alright, so... Pull over here to... I want to get a really good bond. So I'm just going to move it around, make sure I got enough on both pieces. I'll come back and, and wipe this excess up. So I'm just going to press this down and get all that, that oozes out. So now I'm just going to add some of this blue tape to help these two pieces bond together. So 
So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and let this set up. And okay guys, I'm back. And this has set up for over 12 hours. You don't have to let it set up that long. I just got busy yesterday and decided to just wait and start back on it today. Alright, so now all I want to do is pull the tape off. And now that you can see it has a really tight bond. Wood glue is really strong. Okay guys, so now I'm going to take this rust control spray enamel because I don't have any primer. And the reason that I use primer or spray paint for my base color is because it'll give you a more brilliant color. So when I go in and do my silver, I only have to add probably about two coats. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint this white. Okay guys, so I just wanted to come back and let you see what it looks like painted white. So now I'm going to go in with this brilliant silver by Krylon. And guys, crafting can be messy sometimes. <laughs> As you can see, I have paint on my finger. So I'm just going to go ahead and put on some plastic gloves before I spray it silver. Okay guys, I'm back. And this is what it looks like spray painted silver. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and make some Mod Podge with some silver glitter. And then I'll do a couple of coats of the mixture on the base. Okay, so once you paint that first coat on there, try and smooth it out. This is not the best paintbrush, so it's not going on that smooth. But smooth it out as best as you possibly can. Okay guys, I'm back. And both of my layers of Mod Podge and glitter mixture have completely dried. And it's really pretty like it is. So now you guys see why I do this all the time underneath the glitter. Because like I said before, sometimes you have glitter that falls off. You want it to still be pretty underneath. So let's just get started with the next step. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some Mod Podge onto the base. And then I'll go ahead and sprinkle glitter all over the base and the neck as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is let this completely dry and then finish the rest of the neck and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, I'm back and as usual, I had to take a phone call. Um, this is what it looks like, completely covered in glitter. And so now what I want to do to prevent fallout is to seal this glitter with this glitter spray. And remember guys, I'll always have links and information um, as to where you can get these products that I'm using in the description box below. So yeah, I'm going to take this outside and completely spray this twice with this glitter spray. We'll come back and then maybe embellish this some more, so uh, hold on tight for that. Okay guys, I'm back. And actually it's a day later. Um, I want to go ahead and get New Year's celebrations out the way and just relax. Yeah, this is what we have so far. Um, just to do a recap on what we did. I did a mixture of glitter and Mod Podge and did two layers underneath the glitter 
put more Mod Podge on the base and then just saturated it with glitter and then I used my glitter spray and sealed the glitter. Alright so the next thing I want to do is just add some bling around the base of it. I finally got my rhinestone bling in. This is what I've been waiting for to add to my um, glass tray. So I'll be using this in the next video on my glass tray. So I have this and I have my Dollar Tree bling. So I can use either one of these around the bottom just to step it up a notch. But it's really pretty the way it is now. So um, I just want to figure out which one I want to use. I could actually just go all the way around with this bling that way or I could use two rows to go all the way around of the Dollar Tree bling. So yeah, let's just use the Dollar Tree bling. So I'm just going to cut two rows. And I'll leave a link below to where you can pick up the rhinestone bling and um, it'll be in the next video as well so I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue Just like so. So I'll continue to go all the way around and when I'm done I'll come back and show you guys where I'm at. So yeah guys this is what it looks like so far. So what I want to do is add a little bit more um, glam to it by adding some gems. I have these large gems that I picked up from Michaels and they come in different sizes. But I'm sure I can find them online as well so I'll leave a link in the description for you. Um, but we have square, flowers, hearts, ovals. I really like these, so I'm going to use these around the base of my stand. And again, I'll be using my hot glue gun for that. So let's just put one right there. I want to put one directly across from it. Put one between here, put one on this side. See how pretty that looks? I like the way that looks. That's really pretty. Um, just go in and clean up any glue that you see. I'll do that later. But yeah, um, I really like the way that looks. So let's grab our mask and see if we like how it's looking so far. All right. I think I want to jazz it up a little bit more and I'm going to add some of these rhinestones on there. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more. Okay, so that's what that looks like so far. So just looking at it, um, it's really pretty the way it is. But I think I want to go in and add one roll of bling all the way around here and then we'll be done with the base. So yeah, let's do that. So now I'll just start off where the other bling ended and that's right here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here. Continue to go all the way around like I did before. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how to mount your mask. I'm actually going to show you how to do another base um, right after this. I won't be putting this mask on this base because I'm going to do it on the other base. This is another mask that I made. 
that I'm going to do in gold and silver. So I'm going to probably put that one on this base. But meanwhile, if you want to make this permanent, use some E6000 or use some of the epoxy glue that I used in a previous video. You would put some of that glue right in the center and then go around the outside of that with the hot glue. And I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks as well. Put the mask right on top and just hold it down until the hot glue sets up. And if you use epoxy or the E6000, it's going to take a little bit longer um, for it to set up. So just hold it until the hot glue sets up and it'll be fine. All right. And this is how it looks underneath. Um, don't worry about that because I'm going to come in and cover this later anyway but yeah this is how it goes but like I said this is only temporary so I'll be removing this mask and completing it I think I'm going to use a different base for this mask once it's done maybe something taller because it's really big I'm going to complete another mask for this base but I might come in and add some more embellishments to it later but that's to give you an idea of how you can do the base it's so quick and easy and inexpensive so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and show you how I'm going to put the other base together. Alright, so let's get on to the second base. And in the beginning of the video, you remember seeing this base that came with this pineapple that I was able to take off. And um, I have this miter box that I used with the wood. So I'm actually going to try and use that same saw that I used to cut the wood to cut this plastic. Okay, so I'm trying something different. I've already completed one of these stands using the glass base and the plastic clay roller, but I didn't use the saw. So what you do is just loosen it up and force that in and then tighten it back down. All right. Here's our clay roller. See how pretty those two look together? This is my favorite. All right, so let me just show you what it looks like completed on the other one. Okay, so this is what the base looks like on the first one. Got glue everywhere, but yeah, this is what it looks like. I actually want my next one to be taller. So maybe not that tall. All right, and to get this height, what I did was cut this completely in half. And the way that I cut it is I put it down and I actually have an old butter knife and I heated it on the stove and got it really, really hot and then used the heated knife and went all the way around it like this and then just start pressing down. Reheat the knife again and press down. So I'm going to try this and see if it works. If not, then I'll go back and show you how to use the heated knife method. All right, so I want this to be taller. so. I'm going to put it about here, I think. Yeah. I honestly don't think this is going to work, but we are going to give it a try. Um, so many times I figure this stuff out while I'm making it. But I always figure if you can think of it, you can do it. So, all right. Let's take our blade. And... See if we can get an idea where we want to start. I'm going to hold it down too. But it says on the package, let me go around because I want to make sure it's even. On the packaging for the blade, it says that it cuts plastic. So um, let's see. All right, let's just take this loose for a minute and just go all the way around. Okay, guys, so that method is not working for me. I do not have the patience for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get the butter knife that I used on this one. Heat it up and cut through this. Okay, guys, so I have my little contraption set up here. Here I have a metal pan 
and some cardboard on top. I have my miter box and this is the butter knife that I'm using. It's kind of sharp but you can see the discoloration from where I heated it before. So yeah what I'm going to do now is just set it here on top of the stove. I'm going to try and get right in here some kind of way so you guys can see what I'm doing. But I'm heating it up. Uh, let me go ahead and open the door so I can get in some fresh air. It's really cold out today, but I'd rather have fresh air blowing while I'm doing this. The blade is getting really red. Can you see that? Okay, so what you want to do is just press right down. Whoops, let me see if I can get right there here. Yeah. Heat it up again. I think I want to go ahead and take this off. So now it's red hot again. And I'm just rolling it as I press it down. Add some more heat to it. Now guys, if you like the length of this roller, or if you can find something on um, the height that you like, then you won't have to do this. But again, this is me being extra. <laughs> but you don't have to do this. You could do, um, you can use the first method. Okay, so now we have it marked all the way around, and it won't be too much longer. Okay guys, you can see it's almost done. There it is. It's as simple as that. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this around just in case I decide to use it again. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'm just gonna let this cool off and then we'll move on to the next step. Guys, I'm back. I went ahead and cleaned my roller and I cleaned my base as well with some glass cleaner. To make sure I have a really clean contact. So the next thing I want to do is I'm using that same piece of cardboard <laughs> to make some of this epoxy glue. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix this up. And now I'm just going to put some right in the center. Maybe spread it out a little bit. Okay, so now I want to try and pull this closer and get an idea of where the metal is. So I'm going to stand up. Now you can measure if you want to, but I very seldom measure. I just kind of eyeball it. So what I want to do now is just put some tape on here like I did the piece before. And guys, the part that I cut, I went ahead and sanded it down a little bit around the edges because it did have some of the burnt 
plastic around the edge, but it won't matter. It'll be underneath the mask, so make sure that you glue the cut part to the mask and not to the base. Pick it up again, check it out, make sure it all looks good. And then put the tape underneath. I have a little bit of seepage with the glue guys, so make sure you use very little glue when you do this. I'm not going to wipe it up because I'm scared I might smear it. I'd rather have a little bit of seepage that's clear than have it to look cloudy. So yeah, I'm going to let this set up for a while and then we'll come back and glue our mask on and we'll be done. All right. Okay guys, I'm back and it has been about an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my tape so I can mount my mask right on top of the stand. So let's just get started. All right, so I'm just going to tear it here. Hold the stand and take the tape off. It looks pretty good guys, even with the spillage, it's really clear. I'm really hooked on this glue guys, so yeah, check this out, I am in love. And this is the epoxy clear, and it says that it sets in five minutes, so yeah. When I'm not using the E6000, I would definitely be using this. Okay, so let's see if our hot glue is ready. Alright, that's ready. Okay, so now I'll just take my stick and just mix it up. And because I made this ahead of time, I think I need to move a couple of these stones from the bottom. Just to make sure I got enough room to put this here. I can come back in later and add more stones if I need to. But I just want to make sure I have a flat surface. Alright, so I'm just going to bend this up a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my glue on there before it sets completely up. And now I'm going to go around the outside with some of my hot glue to hold it while it sets up. I'll turn it to the back so I can see exactly what I'm doing. Now I'm looking in the front. So now I'm just going to hold this in place while it sets up. Okay guys, so that's holding up pretty good. So what I'm going to do is let this sit for another hour and let the epoxy completely set up. But if you're worried about it, guys, you can always take another piece of tape, put it on the mask, and pull it down onto the stand like that while it sets up. Okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and let this sit for a while, and I'll be back. Let you guys see what they both look like. Okay guys, so it has been about 30 minutes, so what I want to do now is just go ahead and um, remove this tape. And let you guys see what it looks like. It's on there pretty tight, but I'm still not going to disturb it too much. And as you look underneath, you can see where you need to replace the rhinestone. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I think I'm going to put some rhinestones right around the tip of here. So um, let's just go ahead and get that done. All right, just figure out what size you need and where you need to put it. So that works fine. So I'm just going to add that one there. give it a more finished look you can go ahead and clean up all the excess glue add some bling around the neck of it where the mask meets the base to give you an idea here's some regular Dollar Tree bling 
you could just wrap it right around there to give it a more finished look. All right, so to finish this one off, I'm not going to use the Dollar Tree bling. I'm going to use some of the rhinestones that I just purchased. So let's just put some glue on the back. And these are really thin, so don't put too much glue down. thin that you can use scissors to cut it. Alright, just like that. And then just go around and clean up any extra glue that you might see. I'm just going to go ahead and clean these up and then come back and let you see all three. Okay guys, I'm back as I promised. Here's the very first base that we made. And look how pretty it turned out. And again, do not pay attention to this mask because this is a future DIY. This is number one. This is the second one that we did on camera. And I really love how it turned out. This is really gorgeous, but I think the clear one is my favorite. Now, about the base, it might be hard to find these. I'm going to leave an alternative in the description box that you can purchase. And if you remember in the video, I did put some rhinestone around the bottom of this neck just to complete it. And it's really thin. Um, that's going to work perfect for some of my future projects, but I wanted it to be a little bit thicker for these. So I ordered some more rhinestone that's a little bit larger. And it's this one, so I don't know if you can see the difference on camera. Let's just roll it up so you can see. See the difference? But yeah, I'll leave a link for this as well. And we'll be using this in our next DIY. The next video is coming up. And this is the smaller. Let me put these beside each other so you can see the difference between the two. And it's really not that expensive. So I'll be using this more in future DIYs. Especially ones that um, I'm going to give out as gifts. But yeah, these are really inexpensive and they are gorgeous. Look at that. So let's move this aside. So this mask is the one that I completed off camera. And I just went ahead and went in around the neck of it with the larger rhinestone. So it's completed as well. But like I said, the clear bases are my favorite. But the blinged out one is really pretty too. So yeah guys, that's how I decided to do the mounts for my masks. And um, I hope you guys try it as well. Now on to the contest. Finally, I will be announcing the winner in the very next DIY. And the reason I'm not announcing it in this one is because it's just way too long already. So um, I just want to say that I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a glue gun. Let me move this back. I'm going to be adding this glue gun to the giveaway as well. Initially, I was going to add a gift card, but things didn't work out that way this month. Um, so later in the month, I'm going to do another giveaway because I finally reached 50,000 subscribers. And I want to tell you guys, thank you so much. I am overjoyed and so blessed and happy and lucky to have you guys to support me. Sometimes it really takes a lot out of me to get these videos out because of the editing. Kind of gets aggravating at times, but you guys make it so worth it. But I just want you guys to know that I truly appreciate you and your comments uplift my heart and soul every day. All right, so back to the contest. I'm going to go ahead and add the glue gun. I'll be announcing the winner in the next video. So hopefully it'll be up in a couple of days. But yeah, guys, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. And if you did, 
please leave me a thumbs up. And if you are a subscriber, please remember to click that notification bell. Share my videos, guys. Like it. And if you aren't a subscriber, please subscribe now. I would truly love to have you join my YouTube family. That's it for now. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.